Alright, fellow witches. As we're one week out from the return of the Owl House and Amphibia, Disney has dropped a brand new promo for the Owl House Season 2B. Although, I guess they also want to live in secrecy just like Amphibia. Because although the Owl House actually has a new promo, it's pretty vague. For going the traditional trailer, in favor of giving us delicious breadcrumbs. But they're still breadcrumbs, and I need the full course meal. So as always, we're gonna break down this promo frame by frame for all the details you may have missed. Like, why is Hunter a Hexide student? What's going on with Willow? And is this a younger Emperor Bellos? Before we dive in, two things. One, as I mentioned in the last video, I am working on a huge project covering New Deal for animation. I'm going all in with the editing. There's gonna be plenty of research. I wanted to get it out this weekend, but it's looking like it could be more of a Monday upload. As I also wanna get a video out talking about Turning Red and Pixar as a whole. So please be sure to subscribe to Notifications On so you don't miss either of those videos. And starting next week, alongside the new episodes, we are gonna be starting up our fan spotlight, giving back to this wonderful community we built up by featuring your fan art, memes, cosplay, and any other tributes to the show. So please be sure to give us a follow at Vox and at Roundtable Vids and tag us in the posts you want to be featured, and look forward to those segments each week in both our Owl House and Amphibia breakdowns. We'll also repost said segments on social media. With all that said, let's dive in. So the first shot we see of Lucent King on Albert is actually recycled from Ida's Requiem, alongside a few other shots in this trailer, such as Emperor Bello siphoning magic out of a palisman and Luce masking up, both from hunting palisman. I assume they just went with these to pad out the promo without having to rely on too much new footage, which kind of just makes me question how many episodes are still in post-production, and if a lot of these episodes are going to be finished days before airing just like they were before, but perhaps we can look at these reused snippets as hints of what's to come. Moving on to actual new footage, it seems like Willow will have an episode centered around her having a rebellious phase, as she sports a new hairstyle that, I'll be honest, with the lighter green stripe, feels kind of edgy. But hey, I guess it's true to high school. Luce and Gus are cowering behind her as she confidently casts a spell. So I imagine the trio is being confronted by someone, if not numerous people, who's rather angry at them for reasons unknown. And Willow just decides to solve it by throwing hands and calling it a wrap. Alternatively, they could be intimidated by a conflict that doesn't necessarily involve them, such as a monster running rapid throughout the school, and Willow steps up to take care of it, but I don't think Luce or Gus would hide behind her if that was the case. Something we haven't followed up on since Season 1 is Willow's immense power. It remains a mystery. So I could see this episode exploring that through a story where Willow's under an influence akin to the symbiote from Spider-Man, losing sight of herself and rising up as a queen bee, dancing in the streets just like Peter Parker, maybe even taking some social revenge on those who wronged her, which of course would lead to her learning a valuable lesson and prompting her to use her powers more responsibly moving forward. If I had to guess what this episode could be from, it may be any sport in a storm, reaching out, or them's the breaks, kid. Any sport in the storm, as perhaps Willow could be excelling at Grudge B, alongside with her putting stripes of green paint across her face later on in the promo. And the other two titles just sound like those could be Willow episodes. Next up, we have Luce wearing casual clothes and a helmet as she throws down an ice cliff in what appears to be either a cavern or fortress of some sort. Given that Luce wearing this helmet is spotted with a dressed up Lilith later on in the promo, we can safely assume this is from the episode Elsewhere and Elsewhen, so their adventure to obtain more knowledge about Philip Woodabane will accumulate into a face-off of sorts. Moving on, we have Ida seemingly put into a corner as she's surrounded by vines, removing her cloak as she seems to prepare for battle. This location appears to be someplace new, but if I had to guess, these vines were casted by none other than the head of the plant coven, given her appearance alongside Rain and Kikimura later on in the promo. Ida will likely try to confront Rain, whose appearance will likely relieve yet confuse Edelin, only for her to be tracked by the other two. I'm sure this is from Follies at the Coven Day Parade, but more on this later. We have Luce and Amity collectively gasping at something? It appears the scene happens during the night, but given that they're wearing their Hexide uniforms, they could be performing a stakeout of sorts after hours, potentially spotting the likes of Hunter, who has an interesting appearance in this promo. 
or they could be spotting their endangered classmates against someone in an abomination form, as seen in a little bit. Two quick things next. The nameless purple girl with the horns braces herself in what I can only assume to be a grudge me related incident, or perhaps she's dealing with bad girl Willow. And we have the return of the finesser we love to hate, Tibbles, as he gets knocked off his ass and launched into the air by a giant abomination fist, likely cast by Amity. Which makes me think Tibbles has something loose in Amity need, and neither of them are playing games with this menace. Reaching what we just speculated Amity and Luz could be looking at, Gus, Willow, Viney, and Skara appear to be in green sports attire as they're being confronted in the woods by a witch proficient in abomination magic, entering a similar transform state to Darius as we saw back in Eda's Requiem. We know this is the case as the form has a smaller round abomination with a singular eye on top, just like the one found atop of Darius's man. Bun. The face also has me thinking whoever this is sports a mustache in their normal witch form. On a surface level, I think the students may be violating some sort of rule or curfew or are just trespassing and are being reprimanded as a result. Yet, it's always possible something a lot bigger is at play. Afterwards, we have a flashback of a younger Lilith gasping as she's holding a grudge bee ball. And I imagine this will of course not only tie into the episode Any Sport in a Storm, but build upon Ida and Lilith's old grudge bee endeavors that was first mentioned in Winget Like Witches back in Season 1. Warden Raph spins some fire, which I hope is from Follies of the Coven Day Parade, as we haven't seen him in action in quite a while. And Luz's rescue mission bringing her to his place of work, the Conformatorium, seems like a likely outcome. In one of the most intriguing shots of the trailer, at least in terms of character development, Hunter will apparently be joining Hexide as a student. First seen being ensnared within vines alongside his palisman, Rascal, which I assume could be Willow pulling him in so Luz, Gus, and her can interrogate him and figure out why he's enrolled. Later we get a good look at him as he dives towards something, and he's apparently chosen the potion track given his yellow uniform. A good choice writing wise, as it's been given little to no attention. Odds are, whether Hunter has decided to join Hexhead on his own, or if he's being demoted beyond belief, he's here for one true reason. To find a cure for his uncle, Emperor Bellos, and his mysterious condition that seems akin to the Albi's curse, hoping to do so through the potion track. Plus, as he can't naturally perform magic, this is a track that makes perfect sense for him to look into. We actually see a silhouette of Bellos' cursed form later on, and yeah, this this looks pretty wild, though we definitely need more context. Harpy Eater returns and is seen smirking devilishly at the screen. I've never been more attracted to a fictional woman in my life, and while this could really be from any Ida appearance, I do think this is a glimpse of an escalation between her and the head of the plant coven. Next, young Rain and Ida lock eyes in a flashback, which seems to be followed by young Ida charging at them with a balled up fist. So it seems like we'll get a flashback of how these two interacted as kids, and how they first met. It'd be adorable if these two were initially enemies to lovers. That sounds like the exact kind of romance Ida would have. Next up, we have a close-up of Rain's eyes in the present day, turning as the lens in their glasses transitions from a reflection of the sky to its normal opaque color. This is my favorite shot in the trailer for the simple reason that the streaks of the reflection are illustrated in a way where they look like the branches of the coven mark that imprisoned Rain at the end of Ida's Requiem. Reflecting that Rain here is a prisoner, they will be under some sort of control and lack free will. I would imagine, behind closed doors, Bellows performed some kind of mind control or memory manipulation that wiped them of their memories of Ida, who after all, served as Rain's inspiration to rebel. Imagine the heartbreak that would bring upon Ida. Should this be the case, Ida properly freeing Rain from this mental cage may actually be the premise for the episode titled Hollow Mind. Luz is seen leaping from one building to the next with Coven Day floats in the background. Escape mission vibes? In the Hexide Gymnasium, Gus is seen aggressively casting a spell that blinds some of the witnesses. He could be beefing with Hunter or some other school bully. Imagine if he was going against Willow. Yikes. The Owl House is engulfed in an orange light that can be seen from all the windows. And notice that the glass eye on the Owl House itself is gone, replaced with curtains. While I don't have many predictions on what this light could be besides a spell, Bell, I do think some sort of upcoming battle will end with the stained glass window shattered. Keep an eye out. King is piloting a contraption of Hootie, likely from the episode where the gang visits his entire freaking race of people? That's crazy. Can we talk about that? Because in this other shot, King seems to be welcomed with a lot of fanfare. I assume the one walking before him is the man who brought
bought the letter at the end of Knock Knock Knocking on Hootie's door, who may or may not be his father. Though I noticed Ida appears to be absent, while Luz is wearing her old drudgeby jacket. So I wonder if Ida will either be sitting this one out for some reason, or maybe she'll spend a few episodes captured by Bellows once more. Except this time, a lot more incognito. To the point where Luz, King, and Hootie have zero clue. They could be fed alive through the form of a forged note. Something saying, off to my mom's for a weekend. Don't forget to feed Hootie. I know, I do the perfect Ida impression. Next, we see a younger kid encased in a purple glow look up and react to something or more than likely, someone. His mask is eerily similar to that of Bellows, so this could be a young witch with oracle magic being caught running throughout the castle unsupervised, wearing a mask as tribute, maybe a coven day novelty, or this could be a projection of a younger Bellows. His mask could originate all the way back to his adolescence. And if that's the case, we could be in store for a Bellows origin story, confirming his connection to Philip Wittabane. After all, Love's spying spell from the end of the season two premiere was that of a purple color. So if this is a projection of Bellos, it could be through means only Lilith could pull off. And there could be a lot to unpack here. Lastly, we have a shot that I pretty much called would happen that's almost guaranteed to be from Follies at the Coven Day Parade, given the floats. Featuring a large projection of Bellos looming over Kikimura, Rain, and the head of the plant coven on stage. This is likely going to be the big speech about the importance of Coven Day, and as I previously speculated, this moment could even see Kikimura or Bellows discuss the Day of Unity with the inhabitants of Bonesboro. Again, I expect Rain to act moderately normal in this scene, which would spark Ida's subplot in the episode from there. As always, I want to know what you guys think. What are your thoughts on this promo? Do you wish we had more context, or are you happy going in knowing as little as possible? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below, or tweet your thoughts at RontableVids, and you can find me at Fox on both Twitter and Instagram. Throw this video a like, subscribe to the Roundtable for more great Owl House content, and I'll see you guys next time. Have a great day. See ya.